Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 19th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Stockheim, Germany. After disappearing for a few months earlier this year, Emotet has really been back with a vengeance and is well back to its old tricks of serving as a distribution network for various malware. So Pratt wrote up a diary about a sample that he ran across earlier this week and he's discussing some of the traffic that he observed from this particular sample. Interestingly, well, uh, the email actually that was used to trick the user to load the malicious document here was written in German and actually uh, this uh, particular Emotet strain has caused some ransomware infections and such in particular in Germany it sort of made the news as usual you have to enable macros now Emotet is pretty good in sort of coming up with the right reason for a user to actually do that and in the example that Pratt looked at, then TrickBot was installed as a payload for Emotet. And Microsoft appears to have some ongoing issues with its Windows Defender product. Now, one bug that was sort of ongoing, I believe since August, was that when you ran it in a command line with SFC slash scan now, you actually got an error that it was a corrupt file. Now, last week, uh, Microsoft released a new version of uh, Defender 4.18.1908.7 that appear to have fixed uh, this particular issue. SFC slash scan now, now appeared to work fine. But apparently, this new version also added a new bug in Windows Defender. If you are running a full or a quick scan on your system, it will only scan about 40 files. After that, it will stop without displaying an error. Now, of course, that leaves most of your files unscanned and may lead to actual malware being missed. As a workaround for now, according to Bleeping Computer, you should be able to just do a custom scan and that will work fine. It's just a quick and full scan that does show this behavior. No word from Microsoft at this point as to when we should expect a fix for this problem. And then we've got two virtual machine escape vulnerabilities to talk about. First one in QEMU, this particular vulnerability can only be triggered while the virtual machine is being migrated. And essentially it's a buffer overflow in the kernel log buffer that could, for example, be triggered by malicious software within the guest. Of course, uh, triggering the migration may be a little bit more tricky. The advisor here, for example, suggests if you're uh, also increasing the workload, uh, this may sometimes trigger a migration to a more powerful uh, system, but overall it seems to be difficult to exploit this particular vulnerability. It has been fixed in the latest uh, Linux kernel, that's a kernel 5.3, which was just released, I believe, last week. The second issue affects VMware Workstation if you are also using an AMD GPU. The problem here is really in the AMD GPU driver in that it could lead to remote code execution in the shader functionality and that can be leveraged to again break out of a virtual machine. This appears to affect VMware Workstation. Patches have also been released from AMD and VMware so please apply them. So maybe it's a little bit easier to exploit because you don't need to trigger the migration like for the QEMU vulnerability, but then again, it only affects you if you're running the AMD GPU and the vulnerable driver. And I believe for the first time in eight years, MITRE released an update to its top 25 CWEs. CWEs are, well, uh, weaknesses in software. You may be more familiar with CVE numbers. They're assigned to particular vulnerabilities. CWEs are really groups of vulnerabilities or particular weaknesses, as the name implies. Now, back in 2011, when MITRE did this the last time, they actually did interview 
interviews with uh, software developers and such uh, to come up with a consensus what is considered the top 25 vulnerabilities. This time around, they actually just looked sort of plain at the numbers, uh, how often particular weaknesses showed up in CVE numbers or how many vulnerabilities there were, what the severity of these vulnerabilities were, and then they assigned them a particular score. So uh, this approach is a little bit more objective than what was done in the past. The list is very different as a result, but of course, uh, many of the similar vulnerabilities show up either way. The CWE top 25 are a little bit comparable to the OWASP top 10 in that they try to really identify the vulnerabilities that matter. OWASP, of course, is focusing on web applications, while CWE and MITRE are trying to cover all kinds of different software. A lot of these weaknesses, of course, are specific to web applications. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.